Uh, latest episode of Galloping Fire Radio, uh, where we are going to review the uh, five, mil- five minute Children in Need special and the Christmas trailer for uh, the 2012 uh, Christmas special that's coming up in just about a month. Um, I, am, I am your host, Davy Beauchamp, and I am joined by Drew Meyer and Angela Pritchett. Okay, um, so let's start with the uh, five minute preview. All right. Um, what do you guys think of it? Enjoyed it, but I think I enjoyed the trailer more. I think so too. I really do. <laughs> I, um, I like I like the quirkiness in it. I thought it was really funny how he was gonna take over the moon, and all that. Um, okay. It was comedic. I, I and I and then that my, I think that was my fault. Problem with it was maybe it was a little too comedic. Um, it was almost. I felt that um, Vostra and Jenny, who are represented as very awesome characters, came across as being. There's two ways of thinking it. If, it. if it's them, if that's how they act normally, I had a problem with it. If it was them trying to get the doctor out of a funk, I appreciate that a little bit more. And I'm not really 100% sure. It seems like it's uh, getting the I doctor out of a funk thing. I think it's the second part yeah, if I you think look so. at it. The, the way I took it, um, the, the five-minute um, uh, intro, The Great Detective, was that he was in a funk. Mm-hmm. You know, he's still reeling over the loss of Amy and Rory. Let's just, Amy. Yeah. I don't think, really, Rory <laughs> came with Amy, he's upset about Amy. Well, I mean, the yeah. Pons, the, the Pons. Williamses, oh. however you want to put it. Um, I think he was, he's, he's still really in a funk about that. We also know that I think his time with the River is done with now. Um, so I just think he has a lot, yeah, I do. Because they're going this way. I think he's done. I, I, honestly, with, with storytelling, I think the only time we're going to see her again is for the 50th, but um, jumping ahead there. But I think he's just, he's depressed. I mean, he is really, really depressed, and this time he doesn't know how to get himself out of it. And these are these three people that are doing everything they can to um, get him out of this funk. And that's how I took it. But okay. I got to say, I love, I love the feeling, the, the you know, the, the sets, the wardrobe, of that just that little five minute great Victorian great Christmas special that I've been saying we were getting for months, and everyone been telling me no. And and I love this. I, I love the fact that it's in reverse this time. The doctor's always trying to cheer somebody else up. Mm-hmm. This time, he's the one that needs to be cheered up on Christmas. Where did Strax come from? I don't know. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I'll, I'll go ahead and say it. I only watched the clips once. Um, I saw them, I yeah. watched them, and I, I keep on meaning to sit <laughs> back down, but as you know, and you don't, uh, I'm having some computer problems, so yeah. my time online has been limited slightly. But and I was going to bring the computer, but I forgot it last minute. Now, is Strax... The same Santarin that we see in the Barmy Army for Good Man Goes to War. Um, I would like to think so, but I mean, I couldn't the, remember. Is it was it Strax? I thought Strax died though. Well, it, was it? Is it Strax? Was Strax the name in Good Man Goes to War? I believe so. I can't remember. I think I think this is supposed to be the same one, but I mean, I mean, I can understand if this was taking place beforehand. But why didn't they, you know, warn the doctor ahead of time during the Good Man Goes to War that you know? But of course they may I also realize... I think all this takes place after. I really do. But Strax died. Well, maybe he didn't actually die. Maybe they just made us think he did. Keep in mind he's also part of a clone batch, so... That's yes. true. Um, you know. I... Oh, okay. Strax from Good Man Goes to War. If that's... And I feel really bad if I keep on saying that and that's not it. I, I should I should be able to, as a Whovian, delineate that. But I, I liked the humor from that. But the Santarans are slowly becoming comical. And I really like them as Who villains because they actually seem to be some of the more competent Who villains uh, in in many ways. I mean, if you look at, say, Invasion of Time from Classic Who, they actually invaded and took over Gallifrey. So they have this precedent of being 
potentially a lot more powerful. Do you think the Moffat era is, is relying too much on the comedy now and instead of the serious storytelling? I wouldn't say entirely on comedy. Um, it certainly has the quirkiness, and that comes with Moffat's style of timey whiny um, but we're storytelling. We're getting good horror episodes. Or we're getting scary good horror episodes. Type stuff from it, too, that aren't necessarily comedic. Season six was a very dark season. Yeah. Season seven, um, let's see. Uh, with the exception of uh, the two Chibnall episodes that, that we got, though, you know, the dark, there were darker sides of, of the Chibnall. There's certainly darker sides in, in um, Withouse's um, Town Called Mercy. And I guess, no, there was some fairly dark stuff. I don't, I don't think we're getting too much in the way of comedy. But it's also Christmas, and the Christmas episodes... Are supposed to be lighthearted. Are, are, are tending to be a little bit more lighthearted. And, and it would be nice if we got something that was a little had a little bit more meat to it than um, last year's, which yeah, I but, know Davey really liked. Well, no, I, I, I liked it. Out of the Christmas specials, I'd like that one probably, probably the most, but I have issues with that one as well. Sure. Um, honestly, I would like to see the role reversal. I'd like to see, not, not a very serious one, but, you know, you know just... I like the tone that that uh, that the five minute thing had, you know, where it's the doctor being all depressed and mopey, and his friends are coming to try to cheer him up, because um, so many people do, you know, get depressed around the holidays, um, and this time, you know, he doesn't have his good friends to go see. Um, now these other, you know, then his other good friends are coming to try to, you know, cheer him up. Yeah, there's a, there's a. Um... There is that potential that what the events that we are watching with the Christmas episode happen before a good man goes to war. It is that possibility that um, he has met them previous to, and good man goes to war is something that's that's in everyone's future, and this is happening before that. So it is possible. But I mean, then that means he meets a new companion. Why? I, they just I don't know. I, I really think it's set after it. We because don't. There's so much. Wibbly wobbly that would mess with his timeline if this is set before. Sure, I'm just saying it's possible. And keep in mind, we didn't see the companion in the Great Detective. No, we, we didn't. See her, the, see her in the trailer. We see her in the trailer, but not in the Great Detective. And the thing is, is the Great Detective is just a prologue. He doesn't mean that yeah. it's there's that time. Strax is definitely it's... in it. Strax, Strax is definitely in the next one because they, they, sh they show it. Yeah. Um, but they don't. It is Strax. Yeah. I know. I, I just I just don't okay, check good. it. Okay. Yeah. Good. I, I thought it was because you know you've got Strax, you've got Lynx, you've got Styre, well, you've got. That's what threw me for a loop when I saw Strax and the. Yeah, I mean Strax is dead. I mean, so this can be interesting to see how this actually all fits in the. Maybe his copious scheme. amounts of lactic fluid protected him from the uh, last. <laughs> I guess. Um, so, uh, so um, jump, let's jump, since we've, I think we've pretty much talked out The Great Detective. Um, Ooh, what, nice. Um, what, yeah, I know, that. I, that's all I thought of when <laughs> the moon's invaded. I just, I just felt that they, they were very really heavy-handed with their comedy. I, I know that I will probably love it, <coughs> and it made, the, actually, I'll tell you, though, it's really horrible. The first thing I thought of after that, The Great Detective, is The Great Detective gift set uh, with all four figures. And I was just like... You know, it's great to see Jenny again. It's great to see Madame Vopto. I think they're great characters. I know yeah. they. I think they've got their own um, story. Big finishes written. Written something more. It's going to about them. Okay. So, um, here we go. Um, a story named Strax later worked with Madame Vesta and Jenny Flint in the Victor in the Victorian London. It is unclear if it was the same original Strax or one of his clones he had mentioned. Uh, he had mentioned before. Sure. Okay. So. If it is a clone, that solves the whole issue. Well, yeah, the Centaurians, they're clones. You know, exactly. We'll, 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 we'll see Lynx and Styre again, too, but that's neither here nor there. No, because they've actually talked about a, a Jenny and Madame, or Madame Vesta possible spinoff. Oh, yeah. Uh, which I think would be great. So, the trailer. The trailer. Oh, the trailer got me excited. I really, I really am excited about the trailer. I, and I will say, because I was so let down with last year's um, Christmas uh, special, I... I, I watched it several times, and at first I thought I could blame it on watching it on BBC America with the commercials <laughs> and watching it on Christmas while I was tired. Yeah. And I just was just kind of like, it was good, but it left me with a kind of, eh. And, um, ah! I, 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 I like me some Richard E. Grant. Um, I'm excited about that. Give me one second. One of those things that would help if the screen was actually flipped down so we no. could see. No, no, no. Are we it still is, recording? We are recording. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, both shop, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, sorry. Shop. I just... 
It's been a long month. It's, it's, it's been a very <laughs> long month. Um, so sometimes my head isn't always attached straight. Um, and I forget things as easily as hitting the record button. Um, so what did you think about the... Um... I'm excited for it. There was a lot of stuff that makes us want more. We got to see Clara. We got to see her with the doctor. We got to see snowmen that are attacking people and snow that can read your thoughts and things eating people and the villain and it's in Victorian London and you have the always awesome three heads popping over from a from behind a wall type thing with the, I can't remember the name of their little gang, but Madame Vastra and Jenny and The Strix. Barmy Army Light. Yeah, <laughs> so it's, it, I'm so excited for it. Like, I'll tell you this, what actually got me more excited than anything else, um, I'm not sure how you saw the clips, but the like, if you watch the official BBC one, you also got a, a bit of just uh, Matt and, yeah, I what what's I her watched. name? I forget her name. Louise Yeah. JLC. Um, I'll tell you this. They have a, they have very different chemistry than uh, Smith and, um, what's her name? Uh, Redhead. Karen, Karen Gillian? Gillian? Karen Gillian. I am just I love the little banter brain. between them before the, um, the Great Mystery one. Yeah. Where she's like, he's like, and he lost his, his favorite companion. She's like, hello. Like, yeah. Hello. They have. They definitely have a different vibe, a different chemistry, which I think is good. <laughs> oh yes. They really need to move away from what they had, you know, with Rose, with what they had with Donna, with what they had with Martha. Well, all of them. and we're getting a companion that's not from modern time. So, well, we don't know that. Well, you see her talking to Victorian children. She's doesn't, very much the Mary Poppins of the episode. It, it doesn't matter. I mean, we, we're dealing with aliens and other time travelers. You know, we really don't know. We won't know her story until we actually see it. Okay. Especially with that just God. vengeful, spiteful intro where it's just like, the very first appearance of Miss Jenna Louise Coleman. She's like, oh, oh you were in the other episode where you died and became a Dalek. And, <laughs> Ooh, oh. But you couldn't possibly, possibly, possibly be the same person. That no. wouldn't make any sense. No. Well, no, they, they share different first names, but they both share the same last name, which would be, which Oswald. is, Wald. yeah, which I think is interesting, which, you know, makes me wonder, you know, is she actually from Victorian England? Which or I think is she the same great. character and she's just changed her first name? Who knows, well, she's right? She's a human Dalek. Yeah. I, you know what? <laughs> I'm, I'm okay. You can speculate all you want. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I'm just excited to watch it. Uh, oh, I, I, I it too. came on, and I actually I got was more excited about that than I was about Christmas, and that made me feel really, really terrible. Um, so we'll see how that goes with that. So, anything else about this trailer you want to talk about? That I'm excited. I just know that if you're on Facebook and you're subscribed to any of the many, many, many Doctor Who fan sites, that you will be seeing a lot of uh, flesh-eating snowmen. Oh, uh, no. come Christmas time. Well, I want to talk about one little piece of, of news that, that came out. Um, they showed a picture of the new Cybermen. Mm -hmm. Several of them. I'm very happy uh, that they've now evolved. Well, they've been redesigned. Well, to me, it, it's, it's their evolution. Because the thing is, with, with, with the Cybermen, there's always been this evolution in their, in their form. Um, and I just think, I think it's, I'm just really happy to see a new design, a new form. You know, it might be evolution, you know, whatever. I'm just happy to see a different looking Cyberman finally. Well, it's going to be nice to, to see them without the Cybus logo on. That's for sure. Totally. Um, and, uh, yeah. I, well, I mean, it's a Neil Gaiman episode. It's, Neil, it's the Neil Gaiman episode. Yeah. yeah so that'll be interesting. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I'm really excited. I was really, I, I mean, I was really excited about the redesign. Um, it makes me very happy. I've only seen the one where the two of them are looking down, and there's another one where someone dressed as a Cyberman is twirling in a field, and I don't know if that's... Oh, no, I saw I saw one of a whole army of, of them marching. Oh, good, good, nice, um, wonderful. Because they're comparing them to uh, the Dark Elves uh, in Thor. Hmm. So, neither here nor there with, with Thor, but um, they, were just compar they were just comparing the two photos, and that's where I first saw the redesign of the Cyberman. I was very, very happy with that. Well, I think the BBC is extremely excited about the numbers that Doctor Who is putting up, the money it's making, the um, the fame. So I think they're willing yeah. to throw some money at it. I'll tell you, I went back um, and watched most of season five the other night, yeah. and just looking at everything that we saw just in Moffat's era. Yeah. You know, we're talking three years. 
what a difference. It oh, yeah. Really, it's, it's oh, nice. And if you go all the way back to Eccleston and watch it through, because I've done that mm, not yeah. too long ago, I mean, it has really changed. Rose um, looks like crap. Um, not the character. She just looks weird. But the show Rose, it really looks, I mean, it's just like, wow. It, it's, it's almost, it feels like the 96 movie. Well, in, yeah, I mean. In terms of special effects. Well, I mean, they didn't start shooting in high def until the specials and sure. things like that. And, you know. Why would they throw a lot of money into something that was Could very well generally that I mean was technically sort of a, um, a you know a pilot in a sense? It's true. It's absolutely true. But anything else we want to say uh, about the Christmas special season seven, other than or seven B that we're really excited? Um, I just right now I could focus on is the Christmas special. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm excited. excited. I like it. Um, I I don't care what they throw. <laughs> into, I just want more who. Yeah. I'm ready. You, you know that this is just going to be the only thing we're going to be holding on to until um, the next season comes out. I almost went out and bought season 7A just because I still have yet to watch Town Called Mercy for a second time. And I just want to see it on the screen without a, a commercial. So. Yeah, I mean, that would be nice, but I, I just I prefer the, the full box because they always throw in so many more. Oh, miraculous... I would buy the full box as well. I'm just saying <laughs> that my need for New Who, I am I'm now considering going back... Um, and I know by the time you see this, we'll have, uh, ooh, well, the 49th anniversary of Doctor Who will have come and gone because it's this Friday. Um, so I'm going to be watching at least the first four episodes of Doctor Who on Friday, and perhaps more. We'll see. So it's just it's nice. Yeah, wow. Here. Yeah, you're right. 49 years. I know. It's exciting. So uh, this is GPR uh, signing off. Peace. Let's go. What planet are we on tonight? It's hard to find you. What planet?